guys and welcome back to the channel. This is our Tale of Two Flannels discussion video for Dragon Rider by Camellia Funk. This video will include spoilers, so just be prepared for that. Also, welcome back to Miranda, hey. a familiar face here on the channel. So, uh, before we get started, I think we would both agree that it is uh, too hot to be in these lovely flannels. Yes. So, um, let's get out of those real quick. Ooh, woo! That is so much better already. Oh my gosh. I can breathe. I hate summer. <laughs> I hate summer too. <sighs> Vampires aren't built for summer, so... Ugh. I'm just white. <laughs> Miranda is actually the person that recommended that I read Dragon Rider, and I gotta say, I absolutely loved it. So, since it was her recommendation, I am going to just kind of let you take the lead on this video. So, if there's anything particular you want to discuss, the floor is yours. I am here for the ride this time. The tables have turned. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so just the basic summary of Dragon Rider. It's about this dragon named Fire Drake, and he is on a journey to find a new home for him and his fellow dragons. And on his way, he meets a bunch of friends, most unlikely friends, mm -hmm. and just to find his way home. That's the basics that I can go without spoiling. Yeah. <laughs> what was your impression when I was uh, suggesting this book to you? You didn't seem all that impressed when I first suggested <laughs> it to you. Yeah, well, I I tried to read Inkheart, uh, mm -hmm. which is another book by the same author, after the movie came out. And I enjoyed the movie, just because Brendan Fraser. <laughs> um, but I couldn't get into Inkheart. Mm -hmm. I liked Ink Spell, which is the second book in that series. Mm -hmm. And so when I saw another Cornelia Funk book, I was like, okay, I don't know how well I'll be able to do, but I was willing to give it a shot because it's your favorite book. Mm -hmm. So you have given my weirdness chances. So it, it would have been, you know, pretty shitty of me to not do the same. <laughs> so I didn't know what to expect and I was very, very pleasantly surprised. Yeah. I know that you were having a hard time reading the book after that one certain <laughs> character, and I was just like, no, you gotta keep reading. I panicked! <laughs> I was nervous! I didn't want Baby to get eaten. <laughs> but he didn't. He didn't. <laughs> Thank goodness. So, I think we'll just start off with a simple, who is your favorite character and why? Oh, uh, it's both hard and easy, but I love Sorrel. Sorrel is Fire Drake's bestie. Mm. She is a brownie. She is And not the spice. dessert. No. <sighs> I didn't oh, know what a brownie was until this book. I didn't either. Well, there are, I've, I've heard tale because I love mythological creatures, mm -hmm. but I never pictured them the way Cornelia Funk portrays them. Yeah. So they're, I, they're, they're like more feline. They are, and I'll put uh, an image from the book of Sorrel and what she looks like, but she's just sassy and like she's like very like straightforward and is mm -hmm. like this is a stupid idea and I don't want to be friends with these new people we can't trust them mm -hmm. but when she finally warms up she's like ah, you know <laughs> I kind of don't want you to die yeah so I just she was just so funny through the whole book I love Sorrel mm -hmm. I think she kind of speaks to me on a spiritual level oh yeah you oh know? yeah, big time. Because like, and the one thing I loved what the author did is that they didn't make it so annoying. Because mm -hmm. with those type of characters, they're just like, they just go over the top of a sorrel. Yeah. You can see that throughout the journey, you can see, okay, we can trust mm -hmm. Ben? Ben, yeah. Ben and Greenbloom and eventually Twigleg and... <laughs> Twigleg would probably know? be my second favorite character. Yeah. I love Twigleg. But no, with Sorrel, I was also worried that she was going to be that one note, never trust anybody, mm -hmm. always complaining, like nitpicking everything, but she did it in an endearing way, which was, mm -hmm. at, and at that point you're like, she's really just looking out for Fire Drake, she, yeah. and then eventually she's just looking out for Ben and Fire Drake, so it's, it's like that mom friend, yeah, that's like the single mm -hmm. mom friend. <laughs> Yeah, but no, oh, I love yeah. Sorrel. Sorrel was a, I loved her, you mm -hmm. know? And another thing I loved about the brownies is mm -hmm. the different intake in the cultures. Yeah, I really was... enjoyed that as well. The, the creatures in this book are so cool and they 
have such a mythos and such a lore mm -hmm. that you don't expect yeah. from a middle grade fantasy book. Yeah, especially the, like, the 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 gin. Uh huh. The gin was so cool. Yeah, I love the gin. Yeah, I mean, who would have thought that coming from a magical car would grant all these wishes? <laughs> so so cool. Yeah, it's just. Cause like how many how many cars do you see at the bottom of a cliff and you're like there's a gin in there <laughs> right some magical being that'll grant all my wishes well a wish a question a question a question a question a question he wasn't really a genie but he he kind of fall in that category yeah because he also has a thousand eyes mm. that can see everything so that was <laughs> really cool that was also really cool and I we'll talk more about the gin when we talk about yes. the fantasy creatures in depth mm -hmm. but who's your favorite character. My favorite character would probably have to be Twiglig. Oh, only, maybe. only because like when we first get him introduced, you're just like, oh, he's just gonna be one of those mm -hmm. loyally faithful people with no attributes. Like he's just gonna be useless. Uh -huh. But throughout the journey, you can see he's probably the most valuable character in the whole series because mm -hmm. he knows Nettlebrand head to toe. Literally. And literally head to toe. Cause he and the, inside out. Yes, <laughs> apparently. So, like, he was a big attribute. And not besides the knowledge he had of Nettlebrand, the knowledge outside, because he read the books mm -hmm. and the history and stuff like that. So he was just like, hey, I know what we're doing. And eventually, I love his arc. Oh, it's so good. And his arc isn't... What, what is the... It isn't, like... It's original. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's not too cliche. That's yeah, what yeah, yeah. Like it was cliche, but he's always wanted to escape mm -hmm. from the beginning, and we can see that from the yeah. moment we meet him that he's miserable and that he hates his job. Mm -hmm. So when he eventually joins the gang, and when somebody shows him a little bit of respect and kindness, he's like, "My new person, my new <laughs> what person. What is this affection? <laughs> Give me more." <laughs> Yeah, and he was also very valuable too because he's so tiny. Mm -hmm. He got them out of the most of the situations that he they were did. in. He did. That's that's something Twigleg represented, and Lola the rat. Yes, Gilbert. Mm -hmm. It's these uh, gravel beard mm -hmm. eventually. But this book is so much about and Ben being a human child. Yeah, this book is so much about the small people doing the biggest things like even fire drake i think they say he's pretty small for a dragon yeah i think so, he was like the runt or something yeah like that. so this whole book is full of these small characters from a small dragon to a small brownie to a child to a homunculus to a homocussus who's like this tall maybe to rats to just all of these incredible people doing these incredible things and they're dumb. They're, they're small yeah. and it's just inspiring. It's such it a is. good book. It is. <laughs> <laughs> because it kind of just goes to show it doesn't matter how small you are to take on a big task. Exactly. Like, you can do it, mm -hmm. you know, with the help of your friends and maybe a step stool. But, <laughs> but yeah, that's another thing I love is just, it's just all of them. And they all come from different backgrounds. Yeah. That's another thing I love. I mean, even though Sorrel and Firedrake knew each other, mm -hmm. they still come from different backgrounds. Yeah, and their personalities are totally different. Yeah. Firedrake is more of a, this is what we gotta do. Okay, let's go do it. Let's do the mm -hmm. thing. Let's, let's, let's leave home and seek out these other things for my friends. Yeah. And Sorrel's just like, well, you know, come, but you know, we gotta be careful. And <laughs> yeah. She was very cautious for a good reason. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, yeah. from what they were hearing stories with the humans and stuff like that, it's pretty scary. And mm -hmm. then having Ben come along, it's like, yeah. my out of the tables up to her. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just so. great. It's so good. It's like so. just the characters, man. Yeah, I know. So. <laughs> Nettlebrand, I also loved as a villain. Yeah. Nettlebrand. And in fiction aimed for this age group, for any age group really, well, in fiction aimed for middle grade fiction, mm -hmm. villains are either super duper duper evil or are barely in the book. Yes. We get little taste of Voldemort. Um, it, we get little taste of other villains in other middle grade books. But Nettlebrand, he's more multidimensional. Mm -hmm. Cause yeah, he's bad. He wants to eat the baby dragons and pretty much everybody else. And through the whole book, he's like, if you don't do what I tell you to, I'm gonna eat you. 
but at the same time he has like this like I'm trying to think of the word he has this like subconscious attitude subconscious. like this underlying like subconscious thing where you're like you talk a big game you talk a big game for somebody who's been laying on a bathroom floor for the last 300 years mm -hmm. like <laughs> especially when he's to like twig lake tell me stories of my greatness mm -hmm. but leave out the bad parts. leave out the bad things yeah. leave out the parts where i lost so he's just He's very intimidating mm -hmm. because he's so big and he's so like unstoppable, but he has weaknesses. Like he's slow. Mm -hmm. He can't fly mm -hmm. because he's fat. Just kidding. Because he's made he's, of gold. Solid gold. Yeah. Um, he's arrogant. Mm -hmm. He doesn't think that anyone would dare betray him because he's so fearsome and mm -hmm. so like evil. And it just created this really interesting villain that I'm just like, I was nervous when he popped up, but I was also happy that he popped up. So. Yeah, and one thing I also love about him is that we never got to know all of his secrets. Mm -mm. I don't think we ever got to find out why he got to travel in the water mm -hmm. or um, some of the other, I can't remember, yeah. but some of the, like, we got to keep that mystery mm -hmm. of Metal Brand. They didn't do the typical, here's all the secrets, because mm -hmm. even... Twig, like, didn't know everything. Yeah. So, like, he didn't know uh, how he was created, what he was created by, mm -hmm. which turned out to be a toad. Yeah. Yeah. A yeah. talking toad. It was so and good. so, that's one thing I love about Nettle, Nettle Brand as a villain is because we got to see him throughout the book and see the journey and the struggle that he had to deal with. Mm -hmm. And it was very interesting because when Twig, like, tricked them where he was in the desert, uh -huh. that was a big surprise for yeah. Nettle Brand, you know? Oh yeah. And it was really interesting to see that part. Mm -hmm. And he's not dumb. No. He made Gravelbeard spit up so much space so he can travel. Mm -hmm. So, but he, he isn't dumb. Like, he traps the fire drake and the gang in the realm of heaven. Mm -hmm. He followed them to the point where mm -hmm. he was like, right, like, he was very, very smart. Mm -hmm. And he was also intimidating because he intimidated yeah. the dragons. To where they never ever left mm -hmm. their singular cave. Yeah. And they were there for so long that they turned to stone. Yeah. So it's like this guy comes with a long resume. Mm -hmm. But they but he's also flawed, which YA and, and middle grade villains usually aren't. Yeah. So, so I really got to see that mm -hmm. that side because it just made it more realistic. It in did. The book. It was great. It was so, so good. Yeah. Who's your least favorite? Do you have one? Do I have a least favorite character? I don't know if I do. I don't have one. Because they all just come in with their cute quirks and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Because even Lola, who's like, I'm the best. I'm a pilot. I'm so cool. Mm -hmm. I'm amazing. I was like, she backs it up. Oh, she does. She proves it. Like, she, she's the best. She, she's amazing. Yeah, she like <laughs> doesn't even hesitate to help them either. No, she's like... Anything to get out of this boring day job I have. Get me out of the family business. Take me on an adventure. Yeah. So, so it was really cool. Yeah. So. I don't think I have a least favorite. I, I was just curious. Yeah. So I don't either. Because <laughs> like I said, they all have different ways in which you just, they just capture, you know? It really yeah. does. It, it's just so good. Mm -hmm. So three-dimensional. All of the characters. I just love them. Mm -hmm. So... So here's a question I just thought of. You know how in different books there was always that human dragon companion, they're always like connected mm -hmm. by a prophecy and stuff like that? Yeah. How does that interpret towards Fire Dragon Ben? Um. Because they just popped up out of nowhere. Yeah. So <laughs> I think because there is a prophecy mentioned in this book, the prophecy of the dragon rider, and. That's true. Um. I, I loved it so much more than I normally do. Because mm -hmm. the only other really, like, dragon-centric book I've read is Aragon. And I read that back in high school. So yeah. it's been six, seven years since I read Aragon. Um, and it was fine for that book. Mm -hmm. But in this, they don't introduce it until probably... Halfway? Little, about halfway, a little after halfway. Yeah. And it just added, like, another layer mm -hmm. to the dynamic between Ben and Fire Drake. Yeah. Because they didn't need a prophecy to tell them that they were meant to be together. They just were. 
Yeah. It's like they they formed that bond. Fire Drake saves Ben's life when he meets him. Mm-hmm. After Ben saves Fire Drake. Yeah. So they save each other, they trust each other, they're friends. And then they find out that they're also there's a possibility. I don't think it's ever confirmed though. That Ben is a, like a reincarnation of this famous dragon rider. They had theories, mm-hmm. but they've never been like, oh yeah, this is definite. Mm-hmm. What is you it? are the Avatar. Yeah, it was more of a, it could be anyone. Mm-hmm. But it was said that a dragon rider would come and defeat the Golden One. Yeah. And that, in the end, it was Ben and Fire Drake who defeated mm-hmm. Nettlebrand. Yeah. And it wasn't because, it wasn't their duty because they were the prophesied chosen ones. They had to do it because if they didn't, Nettlebrand was going to keep hunting Fire Drake mm-hmm. and they needed to make the Room of Heaven a safe place. Yeah. They didn't do it because of a prophecy. There just happened to be a prophecy that they would do it. Yeah. And it just happened to be that way. And I think the prophecy also helped um, convince Maya, the dragon that they meet at the Room of Heaven. I Maya? think so, yeah. Maya? It helped convince her to f- take that step towards fighting Nettlebrand. Yeah. Because it gave her the confidence that like, a dragon and a dragon rider are here to defeat the Golden One. We can win this. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. It it didn't bother me, but it also wasn't like a central focus of the plot, which I think was smart. Yeah. So, I liked it a lot. Well, that's why I was asking, because when most books happen like that, when they have a mythical creature and a human, they're mm-hmm. just like... It's prophesized to be, and they make it such a huge deal. Well, mm-hmm. in this one, it was like, yeah, it was a huge deal, but we didn't get to know about it towards the end of the series mm-hmm. or the book. Yeah. And I really like that because I think, personally, it could have been anyone. It could have. It could have been and who's, anyone. who's to say that there haven't been dragon riders between the previous dragon rider and Ben? Yeah. So. So, I really like that. I do too. And I just love the dynamic between Ben and Fire Drake because their friendship just grows and grows and grows for this whole, yeah. this whole book. Like, Fire Drake even chooses to fly during the day with a little help from some moon juice to go and save Ben when he needs to be resting. He knows he needs to be resting. Mm-hmm. He's like, my baby got snatched. No, not my baby. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> it's so good. I yeah. love them. Who was your favorite creature? That's so hard. <laughs> It really is. I am a sucker for a sea serpent. Yeah. So the sea serpent was probably my favorite. Okay. I, just because she was so chill, she was just like, because they land on her back thinking Mm -hmm. that it's an island. Yeah. And she's like, (laughs) can I help you? Can I help you? (laughs) And they're like, oh no, it's a sea serpent. And she's like, bro, chill. Like, I I can give you a ride. Yeah. And they're like, for realsies? And then just this little mental image of Ben sitting like on her back while she tells him stories of the sea was so cute to me. <laughs> Cause I'm like, I wanna do that. Oh, so no, I, I love the sea serpent. I thought she was awesome. She also gave him information about Nettlebrand yeah. and the day that he scared away the dragons and she was just dope. Yeah. I loved the sea serpent. What about you? Um, if I'm going to be honest, I'm kind of stuck between brownies and the fairies. Ooh. Or the sand pixies or Yeah, pixies. the yeah, the fairies. Oh, okay, I can't yeah. remember. It's been a while. Yeah. Only because um, I've never heard of the brownies, and mm-hmm. I really loved how they, like, in different cultures, how some have a couple more arms, or they're mm-hmm. more godlike, or, yeah. you know, and stuff like, like, the war chef well with mm-hmm. Sorrel, she's just there, mm-hmm. you know, like, she just eats mushrooms, like, whatever, yeah. you know. So I really like that concept, it might be also because I'm a cat person, but I'm also a fairy, so seeing, because when people see and imagine fairies, they do mm-hmm. elegance and beautiful and just mm-hmm. beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Can't really Like Tinkerbell fairies. Tinkerbell and kind of like um, the, the Lady Light of Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. you know. I know she's not a fairy, but kind of in that In that same in that vein, era, yeah, the you fair know? folk, you know. Yeah, so seeing the fairies in this book, how they're true to their nature, because mm-hmm. fairies are actually very tricksters, they yeah, love, love to them. mess with things, they just don't care, mm-hmm. you know, so seeing that in the book, I was just like, yeah, you're annoying, but I really do like how they mm-hmm. portrayed, you know. Yeah, and I love how when they meet the fairies, they're, like, swarmed 
on the sign like yeah. a bunch of freaking mosquitoes and they just like like have to wave them away like you would for a bug mm -hmm. not realizing that it's a fairy i thought that was hilarious yeah and the fairies were just giving them such a hard time yeah because like, they're like hey we're trying to talk and they're like we don't want to talk mm -hmm. like go away you yeah know? And they also became more of a problem when they tried to leave mm -hmm. because didn't at one point no it was the crows never mind mm -hmm. the ones that blocked out the moon that was the yeah crows. that was the crows yeah that was also really cool that was the also... enchanted crows yeah were uh, and the whole idea of these enchanted creatures being made out of something else yeah so. I really liked that and I really liked how the sorrel and the other brown I can't remember his name they had their spit that can yeah. just stick to anything. That was hilarious. I love them. Oh, I loved it. Wasn't also their spit the reason why Metal Brand's gold started melting yeah, away? Yeah, yeah. Um, Brownie spit would corroded the metal. Yeah. When it mixed with dragon fire. Mm -hmm. That's right. So it was so cool. We also get a basilisk for a minute. Yep. I loved the scene with the basilisk just because Green Bloom came in and it was like, hold on, bro, let me save you. <laughs> Green Bloom was also a very cool character. He was. We, he was we're, an not MPB. we're not talking about him enough. No. So, Green Bloom, right? Yeah. He's this <laughs> cute little archaeologist man <laughs> who just goes gaga for magical creatures. He's one of those people that like, that are like obsessed with mythology, but never grew past that stage. Mm -hmm. He made it into a career. Yeah. But he's also, he's also so respectful. Yes. Towards these, I think they call them like fantastical beings or, or something. Something like that, yeah. Um, he's so respectful and like, he knows their culture. So he like, he like brings Sorrel some mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And he asked Fidrek to touch him and then yeah. he and stuff. He's just, he's like very respectful to Twigleg, even though Twigleg oh, yes. is like this big. Yeah, he loves the, Greenbloom loves Twigleg as much as Ben does. Uh -huh. And I love that. And it was just, he was just so adorable yeah. and so polite. And I thought he was gonna die, but he didn't. And I was very happy. Because Greenbloom is smart. He is. He knows how to work these magical creatures too. Oh, yes. He knows how to how to trade with uh dwarves mm -hmm. saved his life oh yeah um he knows how to screw with dragons saved his life he carried around the mirror saved, saved fire his... drake yep saved. <laughs> yep yep and so. he also found um his dragonologist friend uh -huh. and got them back on track and mm -hmm. even the din or the, the Jin. Jin. Yeah. yeah he even knew about that mm -hmm. and he was able to give so much and it never felt like it was exposition. Yeah, It no. never felt like he was just giving them answers to move the plot along. Mm -hmm. So Green Bloom was portrayed as this very knowledgeable character. Mm -hmm. And he was utilized in that way. And he chased after Fire Drake when he knew Nettlebrand was after him. Yeah. Because he's a good friend. He's like, I know exactly where they're going. Let me get there first and hope I can save my buddies. So. And a good dad. He's a good dad, too. Well, he didn't believe Gwen. But he considered believing her. He did. It wasn't the typical parent, oh, you're just making things up kind of mm -hmm. thing. It was just like, I can see why you would think that, but maybe not. Because mm -hmm. at one point, Gwen was being super paranoid. And, yeah. You know, I don't blame her. Because mm -hmm. she's like, I know what I saw, and her parents yeah. aren't really believing her. Mm -hmm. And even when they were wrong, Greenbloom was just like, I am so sorry. Mm -hmm. I am never doubting you again. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And then, what does he do? Adopt Ben. He adopts Ben! Yeah. Oh, I was I so thought that happy. was really sweet. Oh, as soon as they first, like, he first, like, really sits down and meets them, and he brings them soup, and he makes them soup, mm -hmm. and he's like, hey, Ben, what are you gonna do at the end of your adventure? And Ben's like, uh. Oh. And he's like, well, um, if you ever need a place <laughs> to go. He really was like, I totally imagine the finger, you know, <laughs> you know. Dude, you know I totally see that. Oh, like, it was just so he, sweet. He never forced it either. No. He was he like, wasn't, if you want to, you know, stay with fire drink. Yeah, and he was not like a, a child shouldn't be anywhere near these dangerous uh -huh. creatures. Or you should come in because I know what I'm doing. He was just like, it, my house is open. Mm -hmm. And I really love that. Me too. No adults in this book look down on Ben. No. Mm -mm. I was so gobsmacked.
especially when it came to Green Bloom, because yeah. I thought, and the other thing about Green Bloom, maybe he's my favorite character. Nah, I think Sorrel's still. <laughs> but um, he never tries to go to the Rim of Heaven himself. Yeah. He's like, this is not a place for humans. This is for you guys to do. Yeah. As much as I would love, love, love to be there and be part of it, it's not my place. I respect. I will admire from a distance. And I'm like, oh. yeah, that's true. He's never forced himself on this adventure. No. Because he knows this is not his chapter. It's so good. It was but so then good. in the next book that I didn't know existed. <laughs> I hope we get to see more Green Bloom. I do too. So, I love because that. Because that's because it's uh he's been looking for the Pegasus. Mm -hmm. So I really hope he's into it more. Which almost two decades. There's a sequel. <laughs> there is a sequel. Didn't even know about it until she was like, "Hey, did you read the second book?" I dropped everything. I went, "What?" <laughs> she, she, <laughs> she was in the kitchen, and I was like, "So have you read you read the sequel, The Dragon Rider?" She stops, turns around, and goes. I'm sorry. The what? <laughs> I didn't even believe her because I went on my phone and I googled and sure enough there is a sequel. Came yeah. out in 2016. Yep, came out in 16. Yeah, and this one was written in 2004? Published? Um, I think it was originally published in 99 in Germany. That's right. And then but in translated America. in America in, yeah. uh, I think, 04. Yeah. So. so it was just like such a huge gap because I wanted a sequel for the longest time mm -hmm. and then to find out there is one and I had like five yeah. years later <laughs> so so I'm gonna read that next chance I get mm -hmm. which I forgot to look at in Barnes and Robbins well we're going back yeah yeah we spend not enough time there honestly we really don't yeah we could yeah, crack anyway <laughs> you want to talk about the gin real quick the what? The gin. Because it's, it's the gin. Oh, yeah. Because he's such a, like, a big, like... He's also a big character. Mm -hmm. Even though he only has a couple pages. He's, yeah. He's still a major yeah. part. Mm -hmm. So, what did you think of the gin? So, when I imagine gins, I imagine cocky and just mm -hmm. leave me alone. Here's yeah. your answer. I'm going to give it into a form of riddle. Mm -hmm. Just leave me alone. Yeah. yeah, they're just kind of a jerk. Mm -hmm. It's the nicer way I can say yeah. it. Yeah. So meeting the Jin in this book, I was like, "You're actually helpful." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he still had that "leave me alone" mm -hmm. attitude, but he was still like, "Sure, I got nothing better to do. Let me yeah. help you real quick." And it was so funny because not only was he helpful, he was overjoyed that it yeah. was something that he hadn't heard a million times. Mm hmm. Yeah, because no one has ever asked where was the room of heaven, uh -huh. which was tricky because in the journey before they had to go to the gym, they had to come up with one question, one that was never asked before, and five words mm -hmm. exactly. So, yeah. and poor Ben, I, I don't blame him. No, he was I, racking his brain. He was doing his best. Yeah, so. and I imagined it was something that has been asked millions of times mm -hmm. throughout history. I'm surprised Nettlebrand never sought out the gin. Oh, well, because a human has to answer, ask the yeah, question. That's human, the other thing. Yeah, a human has to ask it. So mm -hmm. I guess that would make sense because no human would know about it except for the people who are uh, the villagers. Mm -hmm. So that would make sense. But yeah. it still boggled my mind because I didn't yeah. think of that. But yeah, once Ben asked his question, the djinn was like, Yay. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> I'm so happy. Yeah. Let me help you out. And so. another thing that's cool about the djinn, too, is his thousand eyes. That was awesome. And he, that was another thing that, like you said, he didn't give it in the form of a riddle, mm -hmm. but he didn't give a straight answer either. He, you have to look into each of his eyes or like some of his eyes and see the answer to your, to your question in the form of like locations, people, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So yeah. I thought that was a really cool twist on yeah, that. Yeah. And he wasn't forced or quick about it. He was mm -hmm. like, take in the environment like mm -hmm. actually pay attention and he gave ben as much time as he needed mm -hmm. for to know the locations and stuff like that exactly. he was very kind he was he was just chill yeah he was just chilling. like so many people in this book are just like yeah let's let's do it <laughs> i so. got nothing better to do you know <laughs> 
Oh, so, so funny. Yeah, and he was just also um, taken back by Fire Drake, too. Because mm -hmm. um, I can't remember, but he's never seen, or it's been a while since he's seen a dragon. Mm -hmm. So when he saw Fire Drake, he was just like, Dragon! <laughs> it's like, you, you guys are still alive? Right? There are still <laughs> dragons out there? Yeah. What? So, um, I really liked the gin. And again, like we said previously, I really liked the car. Yeah. He had that a, was so freaking funny. Because, like, when you imagine a big mystical being like that, you imagine lamps, mm -hmm. like, from Aladdin. Or, like, going into a cave of wonders and or just, like... Or some old artifact or something. Uh -huh. Well, technically the car wasn't... But it's a artifact. car. It's a car. You're 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 looking for like a box or a puzzle or uh -huh. riddles to summon a ritual yeah. even, but no, it was just a car. Yeah, he had to go like knock on the hood a few times for him to come out, and then he comes out of this car and he's this gigantic mm -hmm. blue thousand eyed being. Wait, was it a car or a bus? I think it was a bus, I'm wasn't it? Sure, it was a car. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say, car. if it was a bus, then he would totally, like, renovate the bus to, like, his living quarters. <laughs> he lives in a van down by the river. <laughs> <laughs> he does live by a waterfall. Oh, uh, so. So. I just, and the, the environments in this book were all oh, yes. really cool. The temple at the end, even the rim of heaven. It was all, just, and it was so vividly described. Uh, Cornelia Funk did a great job of setting the scene and yes. making you feel like, I read the desert. I read two-thirds of this book in a day just yes. because I didn't want to stop reading it. Yes, she did. Uh, it was just so good. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. So immersive. Yeah, and that's another thing I love about this book, too, is the different parts of the world that mm -hmm. they have to go and visit. Like, usually when fantasy, it's usually stuck in, like, one specific location. Or at least, like, one country. Yeah. So, having them explore the entire, not really the entire, but like half of the world, mm -hmm. was really yeah. cool. Because they start in Scotland. Yes. Because that's where uh, Fire Youth and Sorrel live. And then I imagine that they went to like New York, or they went to East Coast USA. Yeah. Uh, where they picked up Ben, and then mm -hmm. from there they traveled east. And then they ended up in Egypt, then they traveled up that, that side of Asia. Yeah. And, and like sneak their way across to um, Himalayas and stuff. Yeah. So, but it was just so cool. It yeah. was so cool. Because the one thing that this book does is that you're in. It feels like you're in the adventure. It really does. So I, I, I love it. I love it too. So I guess we kind of touched on this, but we're gonna touch on it a little bit further. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite moment in this series? <sighs> That's so hard. Um, I know he gave me these questions so we could go, I still can't think of one. <laughs> the whole book was just so good. Mm -hmm. I am a sucker for friends standing up for friends. Yes. And p strangers standing up for strangers. So, when, after we first meet Ben, him and Sorrel come back to the warehouse where Fire Drake is hiding. Yes. And he's sleeping because it's the daytime and dragons are like, are like me during the day and we don't like to move. <laughs> Um, you get your resources from the moon. Yeah. So there's a demolition crew at the warehouse about to blow it sky high. Mm -hmm. And so Sorrel and Ben run in to try and get Fire Drake out of there. And Ben distracts the construction guys who chase after him. And Sorrel goes to get Fire Drake. And Fire Drake's like, okay. He's like waking up. He's half asleep. And then he hears Ben yelling. And he's been caught by these construction guys. And Fire Drake's like, baby, <laughs> where? And Sorrel's like, bro, we gotta go. And he's like, no, I saved baby. Yeah. And so, that's one thing I love about Ben and Fire Drake's relationship uh -huh. is that immediately Fire Drake just latched on the Ben. Yeah. He's like, this is my human. Don't touch my human. Mm -hmm. It is my human. Yeah. So I love that moment because Fire Drake just comes up lumbering out from behind these boxes like, hands off my boy. <laughs> and the men are like, that's a dragon. Wagon. <laughs> hands off the boy. <laughs> So run and it was like so who's cute. going to believe them exactly you know like i think yeah. that's why fire drake did it because it's just like who's going to believe you yeah <laughs> and it was like i don't care child is in danger i i i will eat anybody who touches boy yeah so that's cute yeah. yeah 
And I and that's one of my favorite moments because we finally we get to see that protective side mm-hmm. of Friedrich and yeah. throughout the entire book as well. But, but that's the first time we get to see that, mm-hmm. and it's just like the bonding relationship that mm-hmm. starts this whole thing. Yeah. Something else, real quick, that I love about Friedrich yes. is he is a young younger dragon I than he's the youngest. I think he is the youngest in his group, but he's never he never acts. Rebellious. Like, he never acts like a child. Yeah. And when you have like fantastical beings who are the youngest, like um I'm trying to think of it of an example. But like these hundred year old beings who still act like teenagers. Yeah. Um Fire Drake doesn't. Because he's been alive for hundreds of years, so he's like, Look, I've been around the bend. I'm not as experienced as my fellow, so I don't know everything. But I do know enough. Yeah. And he takes initiative, he takes charge, he knows he's the leader of this group, and he's like, okay, people are my responsibility, this is my mission, this is what I have to do. And he never acts recklessly. No, he doesn't. He always thinks rationally, Mm -hmm. which is something that is, now that you brought it up, that's something that we never get to see. Like, he Mm -hmm. just takes on this big pop-up role Mm -hmm. immediately. Yeah. And even... Even when he, uh, even when you would consider a decision more reckless, like when he has to go save Ben from this giant condor, um, but it's out of the goodness of his heart. But he's like, well, what are you guys going to do? Can you guys fly? No, you can't. Drop some moon juice in my mouth and let's go get our boy. Yeah. And he also does that too when Sorrel is just like, no, we can't do that. And he's like, well, then you tell me your idea. Mm -hmm. You got any better ideas? No. (laughs) So he's... He makes decisions as quick as they need to. Yeah. He doesn't. He doesn't waffle. He's just a good boy. Yeah. He's a good boy. Uh, there's just so many great characters in this they series. Are. You know. So. <laughs> um, my favorite moment would probably have to be the battle with Nettlebrand and everyone else. That was so good. Because at this point, even uh, Gravelbeard mm-hmm. kicks in. Yeah. But it's just in this moment of desperation, everyone is just working together, Mm -hmm. and we get to see all of their strength and all Mm -hmm. of their, like, teamwork, like, and not once do they leave each other behind. Mm -hmm. They're always right there next to each other, and they just boom, 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 Mm -hmm. you know, so. The power of friendship. Friendship! Friendship! (laughs) Wink up! You know? <laughs> so I really liked that because even though Nettle Brand was just like, uh, I can take you all down mm-hmm. and gets defeated. Uh-huh. And it's not just because it was uh, an unfair fight between mm-hmm. one and six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Lola. Of... Okay. I was... Lola, Twigleg, the two dragons, Ben, mm-hmm. and the two brownies. Yeah. So it wasn't even just because it was an unfair fight because at one point, I think a couple points, Nell Brand does take the upper hand. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't care about the other ones. He, he just cares. Twig leg. I know. <laughs> he only cares about the two dragons. And he mm-hmm. almost would have gotten it too, but mm-hmm. everyone was just like, nope, here's yeah. some spit. And yeah. I, Don't take that out of the context. <laughs> <laughs> Read the book to yeah. understand. It so. was just great. And it was just a nice little mm-hmm. get together. Because even Gravelbeard, even though he hid, he still mm-hmm. helped out revive all the other dragons that are encased mm-hmm. in stone. Yeah, Gravelbeard has a character arc. Yeah. I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't either. Because he's just this little, like, tag along with Nettlebrand. And he's like this little, he's just trying to survive. Yeah. So he just does what he's told. And but he at the end, he's like, Pretty sparkle rocks. <laughs> you can have this kaleidoscope I got you from the airport. A no, kaleidoscope? I'm not fi- shapes and colors. <laughs> that was that was, that that was, was Gravel Bear. <sighs> and what's cool about Gravel Bear too is just like I don't want anything. Just let me revive your home. Uh-huh. Let me be your interior designer. <laughs> that is what Gravel Beard wants to be. He doesn't even want to take any of the stones no. out of the out of the mountain. Because there are these beautiful, like, moonstone gems that are in this dragon cavern. Yeah. He doesn't even want to take it to have for his own. He just wants to see them because they're so pretty. Yeah. And he's the only dwarf that can. Mm -hmm. So, technically, it's all his. It's all his. So, what's the point of taking? So. And it's not like he can go back home because, A, it's miles and miles away, and, B, they didn't care for him. No. You know? Poor boy. Yeah. So... 
That was my favorite. And uh, adding on to it, uh, getting to see what Gra uh, Neville <laughs> and getting to see what Neville Brand actually looks like mm -hmm. was a mind boggler. Yeah, because in this book, Neville Brand was made using alchemy, mm -hmm. and one of the laws of alchemy is you have you can't make something from nothing. Yes. So every creature made with alchemy has to start with another creature. Yes. So. And so with Neville Brand and all of his crows all turned back, and it was really cool to see Neville Brand as a frog. It was. So. Yep. And the other thing I liked is uh, Twigleg didn't revert back either. No, he didn't. I was which so was happy. really He's cool. Such a good boy. Yeah, because uh, part of the rules with Twigleg is serve your master until your master is dead, or mm -hmm. give your heart or something like or that. Or give to, your heart to a human. To a human and. He did that without mm -hmm. question. And the other thing was, this is another reason I love Twig Legs so much. He's this is before he really joins the group like yeah. wholeheartedly because he's like along to spy on them. Mm -hmm. But he reads about homunculuses, and uh, <laughs> he reads about homunculi, which is what he is. Yes. And it says, "You will live forever to serve your master, or you can give your heart to a human, and you will die when that human dies." Mm -hmm. And he was like, man, I better not give my heart to a human, though. As he's, like, leaning against Ben, reading the book, I was just like, <gasps> it, was, it was so cute. It was one of those foreshadowing cute moments. <laughs> it was just so cute. Yeah. And you're like, hey, you sure about that? Are you sure? Are you sure you don't already love this boy? Uh, oh, he, so I think, cute. I think he did. Oh, yeah. I mean, it took him a little bit of time to, you know, get there, but once he realized that Ben's tensions were filled with them, he was just like, don't leave me. Don't leave me behind. Young <laughs> Ben's to know. Because, like, he even started crying when Ben and them, where he thought they would have to be separated, because he's just like, I don't want you to go. And they, so cute. they got to be together with Aww. Green Bloom and Gwen and... Uh, and the, Vita? Um, Vita. Yes. I think that's Green Bloom's wife's name. Yes. So. So good. <sighs> Such a good book. Um, so, last question I can think of is, you know how in social media, dragons are portrayed as greedy, like smog kind mm -hmm. of thing? What was your intake on dragons in this book? Like, did your opinion change of dragons? I love them. I love the dragons in this book. See, because I've read Aragon, yes. and I I forgot about Smog when I was thinking about dragons earlier. It's okay. But, um... It's kind of like the normal one. Yeah. But it was so different mm -hmm. in how they treated their dragons. Yes. Because with Smog, you know, he's the gold forever, and, you know, D&D &D, dragons are all about treasure and hoarding things, and... These dragons are, they just kind of want to be left alone. They just want to live like any other being. They they want to do their own thing. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to impose on anybody. They just want to, you know, be happy. Yeah. And that's what the Rim of Heaven is. It's a place where dragons will be protected from, hum from humans, from outside creatures, where they can just live and be happy and have fun. Yeah. And so it was so different because they weren't being used. There was no war that they needed to be used in. There was no, there was nobody except Nettlebrand hunting them, but that's what Nettlebrand was built to do. Yes. So, and the only real threat to the dragons besides Nettlebrand was human expansion. That's what was pushing Fire Drake out of, out of the valley where he lived, was because humanity was expanding into that area. Mm. And so it was just, it was like displacing any other animal yeah. or anybody else. It's like they just want to be left alone. Yeah, <laughs> leave them alone. <laughs> and I also like how they in the village where they were just so worshipped and just mm -hmm. held sacred, mm -hmm. like in the um, not Chinese but the Asian culture, mm -hmm. where dragons are more uh, seen as like sacred and uh -huh. good luck and good fortune and stuff yeah. like that. And that's kind of how they, you know, treated the dragons with this. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the other thing. I think the dragons forgot that there were people out, that there were humans who viewed them that way. Yeah. Um, especially where Fire Drake comes from, Scotland, where uh, Scotland, the UK, in the Middle Ages, dragons were being hunted, which they mm -hmm. mentioned in the book. Yeah. Um, whereas in these Asian countries that they visit and that they pass through, these dragons, they worship Fire Drake. They shower him with, you know, flowers and they feed him 
and they treat all of his friends the same way. Yeah. And there's this monastery and temple that they go to, and the fire drake is they give him a big old room he can take a nap in. It's just and they nurtured him back to health too. They did. It was just so good. Yeah. So um, the intake of dragons with me is that it changed it so much because I'm mm -hmm. used to the um, medieval, uh, you know, kind of like things where they're all just evil and just we attack them. Mm -hmm. So seeing dragons portrayed in this way really like opened up my eyes. Like, oh, mm -hmm. we we really like yeah destroyed everything that they worked for. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was really nice to see. Also, Fire Drake never hurt a human. Mm -mm. He's never, or anything. Yeah. He never hurted anything because he was just like, he's basically like all life is precious kind of mm -hmm. thing. But mess with my friends. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> Nano Brand technically wasn't a living uh, thing. Yeah. He was just an alchemetic dragon. Mm -hmm. So it was really nice to see dragons portrayed in this way because it was very different. Yeah. Something else that surprised me too was the book is called Dragon Rider. Yes. I know the the Batman mentions a human boy meets mm -hmm. a dragon. I was expecting Ben to be the main character. Yeah. We start with Fire Drake. Yeah. Which I was not expecting. I was expecting Ben to be the narrator, to be the main character, and he's not. No. Fire Drake, we start with Fire Drake, and then every character kind of gets their own voice because it's written in third person omnipotent. Yes. Um, there might be a better term for it, but... The, these people, there's no one main character. Yeah. Fire Drake is the one who sets out on the quest. It's his quest. Mm -hmm. But everybody is treated with the same respect by the author. Yeah. That no no one character is above or below another. No. Nah. Which I really liked reading as a writer. Yeah. So. It was very nice to see that because even though they all get their own little small side quests, mm -hmm. they all do, they're all equal in mm -hmm. their own, like, thing. That's, I never yeah. thought of it that way. So, Fire Drake was treated as an equal character and not as a tool. Yes. Or not as a cool thing for mm -hmm. the world. It, he wasn't an object. Mm -hmm. He was, he was a fully fleshed out, three-dimensional character. Yes. So. I really it was like really it. good. It was so good. Yeah. It's just a good book. <laughs> So, Miranda, why, why did you recommend this book? Why is this your favorite book? I recommended it because you need a break from vampires. No, I'm That's just what kidding. this month is about. <laughs> I have a couple of favorite books, but Dragon Rider is my go comfort book mm -hmm. because it's just something I can reread and, you know, um, just like everything we discuss, all the characters are great, all the settings are great, the plot is always flowing, we, mm -hmm. and the villain is all good, but... I just, I was in a dragon phase when I was in high school, and I read this, and I'm like, this is so cheesy, like, why would you, but I read it anyway, uh -huh. and it, I just fell in love with it. It's just so different mm -hmm. from all the other, like, fantasy, for uh, fantasy mm -hmm. plus modern mm -hmm. kind of thing, so it was just different, and I really loved it, and it's just something that you can always think about, or yeah. go back to, because mm -hmm. it's just if you read it once, but it'll never leave you. Yeah. Because you will, you will always remember the characters and the mm -hmm. adventures and, you know. Yeah. So that's why I recommended it, because you needed a break. But <laughs> but also because it's, I knew it had your favorite arcs into mm -hmm. it, and it's something different. So, and I thought it would just be a good read. Yeah. And I definitely agree. This is a very comfortable fantasy book. Mm -hmm. I can see why this is your comfort book. Because it's just so easy to sink into and to mm -hmm. immerse yourself in this world and go on all of these different adventures and these little side quests that they go on and all of these amazing and interesting creatures and characters. And so I'm so glad that you recommended this book to me. I absolutely loved it. More than I thought that I would. Like way more than I thought I would. Because <laughs> it, it, it took you a minute to get mm -hmm. into it. Yeah, but in all fairness, you did have other things to go into, but I noticed that you uh -huh. would read like a chapter a day, and I'm just like, it's good. Yeah. Just gotta get through yeah. it. <laughs> and, and it was really good from the start, but yeah, I was, it, and again, something else that threw me was that it was modern and, and fan, it was, it was modern fantasy. Yeah. Which I wasn't expecting. Um, and it was, but it blended the two worlds so well. It did. Because usually when it comes to fantasy modern is it's always the fantasy creatures wanting to destroy or mm -hmm. vice versa, the modern wanting to destroy mm -hmm. the fantasy. But this one, it was just more of a, we got to keep it on a down low mm -hmm. and, you know. They're just trying to coexist as peacefully as yeah, possible. Yeah, like, and, it, and 
one thing I also love about this is that it makes me believe that there are dragons in hiding. Mm -hmm. So and that's another reason why I love it. Even if you just look at a rock, it could be a dragon. It could be a dragon. You just don't know. <laughs> So it's just so good. It's so good. <laughs> and I'm so excited to read the second one that I didn't know came out. Yeah. We'll have to read it. I'm so mad. <laughs> All right. Any final thoughts? Mm, read it. Read this book. Give it a. I know it's like for younger audiences, but it's really not. <laughs> no. I'm 25 and I still go back to this book. And I loved it. I loved it as a first time reader. I loved it as somebody who wasn't a huge fan of Cornelia Funk, who's not usually a like. Like, light-hearted fantasy person. I yeah. love dark fantasy. Mm -hmm. um, but this book, it was just so warm. Yes. And just so... It, it's like it's like a hot chocolate of books. So, it's just fantastic. Go check out Dragon Rider. Yes. And with that, make sure that you go and check out Miranda's social media stuff. I will put it in the description below. Check out our other Tale of Two Flannel videos. And... You know, stick around and see what else we got coming up. Go check out Dragon Rider. Make sure to like, subscribe, turn on the notification bells, uh, all that good fun YouTube -y stuff. I've lost your way. <sighs> <laughs> but if you don't do it, I will come after you. She's serious. She's scary. She's a Pisces. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time. Bye, Bye. guys!